Hey guys, I'm Dave, the CNC newbie, and today it might be the day I break my machine. Lately, I've been cutting uh, pine, cheap pine board, but uh, today on the on the machine on the uh, main bed, I have some red oak. It's a hell of a lot harder. In fact, I struggled to actually drill uh, my my uh, screws down into uh, the support to to hold it on. Now, one of the other reasons why this might be the day that I break my machine, which I'm really hoping I don't is I bumped up the speed. Uh, lately I've been uh, cutting about 900 millimeters a minute. That's kind of what I've been seeing online for the suggestions on, on some websites like Easel and stuff uh, on what I should be running uh, for my machine. Uh, talking to some friends and people online, and they've been running their machines a hell of a lot faster. Like one of the guys was even recommending running at 250 inches a minute. 250 inches a minute, I'm not running two, um, I'm running, was it 36 inches a minute is basically what I was running. I hate the fact there's two different systems. Anyway, crazy, crazy fast. So I've been looking into it. A few people suggested uh, similar kind of numbers. Uh, what's what I've got here, I've got it set to 200 inches a minute. So it's a little bit slower. But 200 inches a minute is still, that's like five five meters a minute. And I was going at... 900 millimeters, so I was going at 10 centimeters a minute. Now, basically, I'm going crazy fast. Uh, what I've changed, uh, before I was cutting pine, I was digging in maybe two to three millimeters on my roughing pass. Uh, this time I'm gonna be going in one millimeter. So I'm cutting less and going much faster. So how that's gonna handle, I don't know. Uh, underneath my table here, I have uh, my uh, fire extinguisher, just in case. Uh, you know, I have my switch, which I can turn off the spindle. I get a uh, on-off switch on the power board that runs the CNC machine, so I can actually uh, kill it all really quickly in case things go south. Yeah, this, I'm actually nervous. Let's have a look. So, so I'm holding you by hand, not on the um, tripod today, just because they wanted to grab it and get started straight away. I'm excited. Also, the reason for the great sunlight, well, the great lighting is the sunlight coming in the window here. It's a beautiful sunny day out here in, in Montreal. Plenty of snow outside. Also, I'm gonna have to ride the, uh, the spindle speed because I don't know how fast. I actually haven't tested at all cutting red oak. I know roughly where to put it for the speed I was going before on pine. I don't even know if that was a good speed. Uh, from what I've been reading online, you go too slow, like with the feed rate, and if your spindle's too fast, you dull the blade. Uh, so it's a balancing act. So we'll see. I'm rambling on, I'm nervous. I have tested the cut in the air, so I know it does move in the right space. So that's it, that's all the testing I've done. Let's, uh, let's see how we go. So we're gonna turn this on. Now I'm going to go up to the same kind of one o'clock position because it's done me well so far, but I'm going to be kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, so it's right now it's where it should be. So I'm going to re uh, reset zero so we make sure we're good. File mode, so I've got my file. By the way, I'm going to be cutting uh, some mountains and valleys. I've got a, got a uh, country that I'm going to be cutting out. I'll show you what it looks like, hopefully. In the end, if it doesn't screw up, it might screw up. Four millimeter end mill, and uh, let's see where we go. It's going really high. I don't know why it set itself so high to, for clearance for the first movement. It almost emptied out the whole bit. It's not even cutting it. So I'm going to cancel that. And I want to work out why that happened. I'm going to check the files and, and see what the go is. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
I'll cut back to you when I have some uh, some better news. All right, so the sun is setting. We're still up a little bit, but uh, we're cutting. Uh, the first depth of cut is uh, is really really shallow. Like it was just when it's doing a spirally thing, it just touch the bottom and then be done. So I don't know what's going on. Z height. I'm assuming it's all good. The the piece of wood itself is quite quite well milled. So it's quite well flat. Uh, but I. I, there's no way to test the middle of it from, from my uh, limited tool set. But I'll give you a quick look at what's going on. It's just it's going around. Now, if you're uh, experienced in CNC, is that a good amount of chips? Like, is the super, super shallow that I'm doing, is the chip amount good? Chip size. So. I've, uh, I've brought, dropped down the uh, speed just a little bit. But if I bump up the speed, you can just listen to it. I'm gonna go just a little bit. So the cut seems to be a little bit more high pitched. Um. I don't know whether that uh, change in um, pitch Means I'm I'm brushing I'm burnishing now rather than cutting as much. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing. That's why I'm the CPC and C newbie. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, quite a long cut. Turns out this machine has a speed limit built into the firmware. It's got a speed limit. I only found out while well, I'd started this cut, and well, I didn't want to. Waste all the wood and all the time that I'd already worked out once I found this out, so I waited for the cut to finish. It was a very long time, but the results are great. I'm amazed. And this is what we came up with. This is just the raw wood straight out of the machine. You could look, see if it's focusing. No, I think it's struggling to focus. Anyway, super, super cool. So this is Columbia in case you, you don't recognize it. Uh, anyway, I think, I think it goes that way. Yeah, super, super cool. It, it came out beautifully. So I only did um, did 4% uh, step over. Really, really tiny amount. That's one of the reasons why it took so long. Um, but only one direction. I was thinking of doing it two directions, but the time I was taking, I was like, it's going to be ridiculous to do it in two. Uh one of the problems I ran into, though, for some strange reason, even though I had done the uh, spoil board before, spoil board was perfectly flat to the machine. This didn't cut all the way through. I find that really strange, because even though I'd set it to cut all the way through, probably about 70% of it uh, was close, but didn't go all the way through. So, in fact, I actually uh, cut it out uh, with ha by hand with the, uh, my Dremel tool, uh, and then I had to kind of fix up the edges, because it was just a nightmare trying to get that done by hand um but yeah i need to work out why that's it i was being conservative i didn't want to dig all into my spoil board too much but i guess i gotta go like i know half a millimeter below the the bottom of the the wood just to to make sure it cuts through because yeah otherwise that's gonna be a problem for me anyway uh the next step actually uh if you stick around i'm gonna uh finish this so I've never actually done much finishing before. The uh, Poker Trophy would just spray, lacquered, nothing special. But this, I've got some Danish oil. Uh, I've been doing some research, asking some questions online. Plenty of people help me on, on Facebook. Thank you guys so very much. And um, yeah, we're gonna, gonna Danish oil this up and hopefully it'll bring out all the detail in the wood, uh, in the grain. I love, even on the flat, you can see the details of all those, the river deltas and such. I think it's going to really pop when it uh, when it's all finished. Anyway, see you in a bit. Hey guys, so we're back, and now I'm in my kitchen. Uh, in the spirit of being a newbie and having no idea what I'm doing, I have no idea, no idea what I'm doing. So I got my Danish oil. Now, of course, I only sell it in big tins. I need like the smallest amount, I think, but I couldn't couldn't buy any smaller. Uh, brush on the table. I have um, garbage bag. I want to ruin the table. Even the finish might improve it. I don't know. Uh, I want to do a quick test on the scrap that I have left over. 
Uh, there's, there's a bit in the corner that you kind of can't really use, or it can be think, too small to use for something else. Uh, so we can do a little test on that, just to have a quick, quick check. Uh, foam brush, I've been recommended online use a foam brush. A lot of other places have recommended paper towel. I have both. Apparently you put it on, you wait about 15 minutes, you wipe it off. Apparently you put plenty on, because it'll go in. That's the interesting thing um, about Danish oil from the research I've been seeing is Danish oil doesn't sit on the surface like a lacquer, it actually goes into the wood and that's how it brings out the color. So, push down and turn. Also, get your gloves on, because that way you stain the wood and not your hands. Where is that not? I've got my handy dandy little paint tray thingy, because I didn't have any tins and I want to use a bowl at home because it's no good. I don't know how much I need. Let's see, that's enough. No, I can add some more. Now I'm going to move, move the piece just away a bit. I'm going to bring you down so you can see a bit more of what's going on. There we go. We're loading up the brush. That looks great. I want to do this whole piece now. So we're going to get. So definitely, you can see. I don't know if you can see there with the reflections. But uh, some areas seem to be more thirsty than others, and that's what I was reading is totally fine. Uh, and basically to make sure we apply it so everything gets plenty because it's going to absorb as much as possible. But yeah, that's nice. That's uh, you can already see the big color difference, the the richness, so we're a little bit of shine. I think that shine's going to go away. It can be a bit more of a of a matte finish when it's uh, when it's done. And it is 15 minutes and then you wipe it off. So let's start doing now our piece. This is the uh, moment of truth. So I'm going to load up that brush. It does say to flood the surface, so I'm giving it plenty. Being generous. Wow, that's looking really good. Like already, that's amazing. And the br the foam brush is paying off. So it's on, now I'm gonna wait 15 minutes, wipe it off. But the tin does even say, by the way, that's the internet uh, rules, and you know internet is always on point. So then flood surfaces and brush or cloth, done. Apply additional finish to areas that absorb all the liquid, done. Um, reapply allowing for 15 minutes penetration. Uh, wipe surface completely dry. I'll be back in half an hour. All right guys, and it's done. So the, I did this last night, and let it dry basically all day, even though I didn't really need to. But uh, here we go, I got it in the sun, so I can't even see it. And I gotta say, the finish looks absolutely fantastic. So the instructions just said to wipe it on for half an hour, add another coat, 15 minutes, wipe it off. Absolutely beautiful, honestly, the, the wood, I don't know if you can see it, it's looking as good, but absolutely amazing. I am. I'm so blown away right now on uh, on how the how the finish actually looked. Now we put it in the sun, you kind of see the mountains a bit better. So I like that uh, 
I get the sun casting across. Even though the small subtle rivers and the flat areas all came up really nicely. So I'm super happy. Next thing I need to work out is, uh, can I work out do tool changes? That way I can cut the final pass with a much smaller bit than the, uh, the big pass. And uh, that'll allow me to get even finer detail on, our, on the mountains. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, but that is, uh... Man, let's go. there we go, in the shade, why not? That's Columbia. That's super cool. Catch you around.